Within the lecture on the history of psychology, I noted that psychology is many things to many people. And to many people within psychology, the field is, above all, a science. Now, within philosophy of science, there are many major debates about how one defines a science and how one counts whether something is or is not a science. But for our purposes, we are going to define psychology as a science because it uses the scientific method to advance knowledge within the field. Within this lecture, we're going to learn about the scientific method and see how it has been used to address a major controversy within the field of psychology. So what is the scientific method? The scientific method is a process. A process by which scientists take what they know, evaluate it, test it, and then change our knowledge based on the outcome of those tests. This process starts with our current knowledge on a topic. This is our current model of everything we know about our general research topic. Our knowledge in any domain is seldom, if ever, complete. There will be gaps in knowledge or areas within the model where there is disagreement. And so a scientist will look at what we know and formulate a research question that will allow us to fill in the gaps or resolve these questions. Based on that question, they will define a falsifiable hypothesis, a statement of what they believe to be an explanation that addresses their question. Falsifiability is a major key to what defines science. Science has to be willing to phrase its hypotheses in ways that data might support or reject them. The possibility must exist that a hypothesis can be proven wrong. This differentiates science from non-sciences, such as astrology. Astrologers seldom will ever admit that a horoscope is wrong. They'll always come up with some other reasons why you didn't come into money or take a long trip. Their hypotheses are not falsifiable. So, whatever hypothesis you propose, you must frame it in a way that the data may prove you wrong. And that's the next step. Gather data. You must now go out and gather data that will test your falsifiable hypothesis. This is another hallmark of science. Once we state our hypothesis, we hold ourselves accountable by gathering data. And once we gather those data, we ask ourselves, honestly, whether the data support or reject the hypothesis. Either way, we have gained knowledge that can advance the field, and that knowledge feeds back to start the process all over again with new research questions. So, one example of the scientific method in action came after the publication of a controversial study. In 1998, a doctor named Andrew Wakefield and several colleagues published a study that claimed there was a link between the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine and rates of autism in children. They claimed that the MMR vaccine was causing autism in some children. Now, this flew in the face of current knowledge in the field. If it were true, it would significantly add to our knowledge of autism. But, based on our understanding of the disorder at the time, there was skepticism about Wakefield's claims. Nonetheless, researchers decided to test the validity of his claims. One line of inquiry, and there were many, looked at trend lines of autism diagnosis. The MMR vaccine was introduced in different countries in different years. So, researchers created the hypothesis that if vaccines cause autism, then we should see increases in autism diagnoses in different years, in different countries, depending on when they introduced the vaccine. Note that this hypothesis is falsifiable. Either the data could support the hypothesis, in which case we'd see significant increases in autism after introduction of the vaccine to any given country, as compared to that country's historical trends. Or, the data could fail to find an increase, in which case the hypothesis would be rejected. So, across a number of studies, researchers collected data. And what they found was that the introduction of the MMR vaccine had no effect 
on the trend lines for autism diagnosis. This, and many other lines of inquiry, failed to support the hypothesis that the MMR vaccine caused autism. Knowledge was gained, and that new knowledge now allows scientists to generate new research questions. The scientific method worked, but does it always work? Well, we'll look at that in our next video.